everybody. Uh, welcome back to Destination Unknown. Uh, that's the name that Blake and I decided for uh, for these podcasts. Absolutely. Just because episode two, we don't know where our conversations are going to go, but we know uh, never know where they're going to take we know us. Who we're talking to, and we know uh, <laughs> that it's going to be a good time. So uh, <laughs> yeah. we're actually filming uh, episode two. Before episode one has even aired, uh, it is scheduled to air tomorrow at the time of this recording. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. So we have not yet gotten your feedback, so we are not making any changes. Uh, You don't have to think we're just stubborn. Uh, (laughs) We just don't know what you have to say yet. A couple of blockheads, you know. (laughs) So, uh, yeah, let's just dive right into it. But uh, Uh, Josh, so something crazy happened to me uh, earlier. Okay, okay. So I, uh, this is the story that I was withholding from you. So I went for a little walk All right. to the, uh, in between our live streaming of Fortnite, uh, I took a little walk to the nearest gas station because your boy was craving some ice cream, you know, okay. needed some Ben and Jerry's. <laughs> so on my way there, I pass this apartment and what do I hear? I hear the tiniest little mew and I look and I see this little cat. And it's sitting by this apartment complex, and it comes over to me. I don't even have to call it. It just comes over to me. And I start petting this cat, and I say, okay, kitty, I need to go. So I go buy my ice cream. Uh And then as I'm walking back, I hear the same noise, and I look over, and I see that this cat is back, and it comes over to me again. But this time it runs. And so I pet it again, and I give it a few pets. I was like, all right, I got to go home, kitty. So I start walking. And then I look over my shoulder, and what do I see? This cat is running alongside me, this little cat. (laughs) And I'm thinking, okay, well, eventually it'll turn course. You know, it knows where its home is. It'll turn course. I make it all the way to my door. This cat is still here. So (laughs) what do I do? I let the cat into my house (laughs) is what I do. Uh, You know know those stories of like little kids like, oh, he followed me home. Can I keep it? That was me. But I'm an adult man, so I let the cat in my house. No problem. (laughs) You made the decision. Uh, We were playing... Yeah, I made the decision. So we we were playing with the cat earlier. Uh, we made the executive decision. You know, we could have stolen somebody's cat. It looked like it was on the apartment complex do- like doorstep. So it looked like it belonged to somebody. But it followed me home. So like maybe they need to just love it more or something. I don't know. <laughs> but cat's currently outside. We were playing with it when you called me earlier. And um, if it's gone by the time uh, I go back out there, then we'll know that it wasn't you know, meant to be, but if it's still there, you know, if we loved something, let it go and it comes back. It's ours to keep. That's, that's what I say. I agree. I think that's sound logic. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, so if the cat's still there, you know, maybe buy some cat food, have an outside cat. So that was the special visitor that you wouldn't tell me about? Oh my goodness. He's, he's adorable. Yeah. Uh, We were calling it Nala until we, um, realized that it was a boy cat, but it's not, (laughs) Uh, it's not orange, so it, Simba would be too overplayed. You know? Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. We didn't want to go that direction. So, currently unnamed. Uh, it's a little little baby kitty, and I love him. Oh yeah, so much. Dude, cats are a gift so from much. the Lord. Anyone that says otherwise, <laughs> whew, mm. I don't like you. <laughs> Get out of here. Get out of here. If you don't love cats, you don't love America. Man, Stop. like, I love dogs. Like, I adore dogs. Yeah. But I love cats yeah. just as much. Probably more. Yeah. Like, you know, I'm I'm 100% a cat person. Yeah. Uh, you know, I don't think my girlfriend, you know, my girlfriend, Rachel, she called me, quote, a dog racist earlier because I, rem- <laughs> I starkly remember once a dog came to our door and her and Wyatt wanted to bring it in. And I said, no, that's somebody's dog. Like, don't bring that in here. They wanted to give it a bath. Uh-huh. And I said, no, like, don't, I, I don't want that. I don't want that dog to have a bath in like my bathtub. Like, I don't want to. Like, go to take a shower in the morning and there'd be dog hair everywhere. Especially if it's not my dog. Yeah. But this cat followed me home and I was like, yeah, you can come in. You're a good boy. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I am a dog racist. I don't know. Man, I mean, I love <laughs> I love a good doggo, but there's no beating a little yeah. cat for me. <laughs> no, little, little kitty. They're the best. Oh, my goodness. So, uh, <laughs> I just came from, uh, from the church and, like, a bunch of people were, like, going out to do something. And, like, I was just a huge yeah. inconvenience. And I was like, not only can I not go along and participate in the fun activity that you're doing, but I need one of you to go out of your way to drive me back to my house. <laughs> and <laughs> Just to record a podcast. And, yeah. like, like, it's just been such a frustration, <laughs> like, this summer, like, not having a vehicle. Because 
<laughs> because like i mean i've never been without like transportation like i've i've driven the same yeah. truck for years and like even when i haven't had that like i've used you know one of my parents cars or whatever the case may be but like yeah i just feel like a bum like <laughs> Like... No, that's how that's how that's how it was for me uh, freshman year. So freshman year, they didn't let us take or well, I guess I guess they did. I guess they let us take it. But like the parking, the only parking space we could get on Ball State campus freshman year was so far away. It wasn't convenient. I didn't want to park there anyway. I couldn't park anywhere remotely close to campus. Mm-hmm. So I was like, forget it. I'll just I'll walk. And if my parents want to come like see me, I'll save on gas money. They'll come pick me up. And that's exactly what happened. But if you need to go anywhere, it's so inconvenient, man. You're right. Yeah, I hate it because just like, I don't know, it's not, it's not only inconvenient for you, but it's inconvenient for other people. And like, yeah, like, I, I don't want to shell out gas money to everybody all the time. You know, you, <laughs> you do feel like a bum. You just feel like somebody who can't help themselves. You're like, hey, can you drive me? Yeah, I don't even <sighs> again, you know, I don't even mind like helping pay for gas. But like, it's just I don't know. Like, <laughs> it's just so frustrating. And I just rather not deal with it. You know? Yeah, for sure. And, uh, but, uh, we normally both have access to vehicles, yours far nicer than my own, but. Okay. okay, So, yeah, no. So I, uh, for those of you who don't know, I drive a 2010 Dodge Challenger and it's funny, you know, it is a nice car. It is a nice car, but it's also a money pit. I don't know how much money I've thrown at that thing (laughs) since I got it. I got it as a, got it as a graduation present. Uh, no, I didn't buy it with my own money. Uh, make fun of me, whatever you want. It's fine. I don't care. Well, he conveniently it was grad- he conveniently totaled his car uh, <laughs> at, before going into his senior year, so his dad could yeah, gift him yeah, with no, a that graduation a, gift. <laughs> uh, that is, you know, that's what I would call defamiliarization. You know, what you're saying did happen, yes, but that's not how it happened. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, so my uh, junior. Was that junior year? Senior year. It was the beginning of senior year. I was driving to school. I had a Chevrolet Cavalier, and I was driving the same speed I drive on these roads every single day. It's Fast. Like back country roads. Yeah. yeah. I was driving probably... <laughs> it was only... I was only driving like 40 miles an hour and like a 35. Like five miles over the speed limit. So not unreasonable. No. You know, I was going slightly over the speed limit. But it was raining. That was the problem. And I come over a hill and there's a stop sign at the bottom of the hill. So I was like, okay, let's break, you know, like we always do. Let's break. Well, what happens? I, uh, my brakes lock up and I go skidding and I'm like, my head just starts racing. And I think this is hydroplaning. This is what they told me about in driving school. I'm, I'm going to die. Yeah, that's scary. <laughs> so I'm, I skid, I skid like 50 feet, like no joke. I... Like, my tires aren't moving. They're just completely stagnant. But my car goes 50 feet right into the rear end of a truck. And I am just, I'm sick. I'm sick to my stomach. I don't even know what to do. I get out. I ask the other people if they're okay. And they're like, "Uh, are you okay? And I was like, no. And they're like, no. Like, like, are you, do you need to go to the hospital? I was like, no, I just feel, I just feel sick to my stomach. This is a lot of money. This is, oh. Dude, I bet. I can't imagine. it's one of those things you don't even like when you put yourself in a situation like that, it's very seldom that that happens that you end up in these situations where you just realize that you're, uh, just unimaginably screwed basically. Yeah. You know, like ever, all the money that you had is going to go towards this now. Like this is your most pressing issue basically. And it sucked. Uh, we had to rebuild that car. Uh, I mean, I say we, but it was mostly my dad. I held a flashlight for him cause I don't know what I'm doing out there. It's I'm pathetic. We, we'd go out in the garage late into the hours of the night. I bought all the parts for it. I paid probably two grand to fix that car. Oh, my goodness. But it just wouldn't work. It just wouldn't work, uh, the Chevy Cavalier. So we found a buyer for it who bought, who took it off our hands. And one day my dad told me, uh, well, before we'd sold it, before we sold it, uh, he told me we needed to get a new engine block. And I was like, oh, okay. And, like, me knowing literally nothing about cars, I was like, that seems reasonable. Let's get a new engine block. So he drives me to Moore's. I don't even know what an engine and, uh, block what, is. I, I, you know, it's it's the thing that runs the car. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's the just engine. the engine. Yeah, it, just like the okay. engine block. Yeah, like a. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, I, didn't... I don't want to sound. I don't want to sound too stupid here. I'm not going to go into this. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> we get there. <laughs> we get there, 
and um, and we pull up next to uh, this black Dodge Challenger, mm-hmm. and it goes, uh, "There's the block. It's attached to a car." And I was like, "No, nah, no. Nah, where's it at? Where's come on? Where's the engine? Take me to the engine. Let's put it in the truck. Let's go home." He's like, "No, that's it." And I was like, "Are you serious?" And he said, "Yeah." And I just remember freaking out. Like I, I lost it, man. That was it was the best day of my life. It was Ooh, yeah. so incredible. I couldn't thank him enough. Yeah, it was so great. Um, I love that car to death. Don't get me wrong, but when I say it's sports cars are expensive, you know, like you, you know that you know that going in that sports cars are expensive, but it's just like so much on gas. That had a had a fuel tank leak. I spent like fifteen hundred dollars on that. Oh my god! Uh, I had to replace all the tires. Uh, and I mean, a lot of these things are just regular maintenance, yeah. but it's, it's been expensive. It's been expensive. Yeah, man. Like car wrecks are so freaky. Like I've never been in. Yeah. No, I mean, I, I'm lucky that like it wasn't bad. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Have you ever had an airbag go off in front of you? No, never. Those things, you know, like the thing is that airbag, I recognize that it's there to save my life. Yeah. But they do so much damage to your car. Like, you don't even realize. Like, the airbag broke my windshield. Oh, my goodness. Like, I, I didn't break my windshield uh, hitting the truck. What broke my windshield is the force of the airbag. The airbag explodes in my face. And there's this hot, hot powder that comes out with it. And so my arm got burned uh, from the powder. And then uh, my windshield broke. Uh, my steering wheel was destroyed. And... Um, I don't know. It was it was a lot of expensive fixes, is what it was. Yeah, dang, I bet. Um, but I still had I still had to go to school that day, and I just felt awful. Yeah, I mean, it's just so much yeah. money. But yeah, like yeah, I've a uh, I've never had <clears throat> an airbag deployed in my face, or uh, I've honestly never really been in like a bad accident. But uh, I have. Yeah, no. I mean, that it wasn't. It wasn't bad. Mine was like it was like a fender bender. I mean, yeah. my airbag went off, but it wasn't like my car was flipping or I was going ninety miles. An yeah, hour. but I mean, I've seen you, some terrible your car things. Car was technically totaled though, so it was a bad accident. Yeah, it was. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. My fault. But yeah, like I haven't really you been, live and you learn. I haven't really been in an accident, but I have had freaky situations on the road, which like freaky situations. Yeah, let's hear about. So it. I don't even know like if i've told you this story like i honestly don't remember if i've told you this story or not we'll see we'll um, find out but uh so the reason by the way i know you can't see me but i'm wearing your shirt i'm wearing the indiana josh shirt heck yeah dude (laughs) i would say rapturefilms.com slash shop or whatever the link was but it's not it's no longer a thing so you can't get it (laughs) i can't get it but collector's item anyway anyway um freaky car situation so the i'll, I'll just start with the the, the very beginning so okay. i uh, used to work at pizza hut like when i was in mm, high school i remember those good days. old pizza hut days. days um and i got off work early one night because no 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 opposite opposite i did not get off early um, I had to work later because we were understaffed, not overstaffed. I was about to tell the story completely incorrectly, but <laughs> we were understaffed. So I had to stay later than I normally did. And, um, it's like a Thursday night, so it's still like mm-hmm. a school night. Um, so they mm-hmm. usually try to get me out like nine at the latest. And this mm-hmm. night it just like, wasn't possible. Like it wasn't, it wasn't practical. So I ended it up. Yeah. I ended up staying until like, you know, ten thirty or eleven, and yeah. um, like I mean that's not that late, but um, it is you know late for a school night. But so yeah. I uh, I finally get out, um, get out of get off work, and um, I'm heading mm-hmm. home. And do you know the stretch of road in between Bedford and Olytic? That's kind of like a yes. valley. Yeah. So it's like probably just a half mile long, like if that. Yeah. But um. Yeah. I'm trying to paint a visual for the people that aren't familiar, but um, Indiana is by no means a mountainous region, but like, <laughs> I would say that like the the short road that I was on between Bedford and or- Olytic is kind of like a valley in between two hills. Um, yeah. So like you can see, 
the whole road in front of you and then there's no like light pollution or anything like that there are no houses around it's just like this road and like a half mile long and uh, i'm on this road and there's one other car on the road as well and they are headed in the opposite direction of me so i'm heading from bedford to olytic where i lived and they are heading from olytic to bedford and okay and we're just driving like i'm driving i'm by myself they're driving and all of a sudden like they flip off their headlights and like it's it's nighttime like it, it like it's it's late at night so like yeah. that's weird like that's super weird and um yeah. not only did they flip off their headlights but they start to slowly get into my lane like they start slowly pulling onto my side of the road. So okay. So I'm driving and like, it's just me and this one other car like on the road, and they're getting into my lane. Are you are you like driving fast? Are you driving fast? And not really. Like I'm just you know I'm going the speed limit. Like I'm just you know driving, yeah. and like when they start doing this, like I start slowing down, and like I don't even know how to react because like, yeah, because like they know what they're doing like they like they know what they're they're doing and like i'm just kind of like stuck like i can't do anything so like i i yeah. honk but like they don't do anything they just like keep coming into my lane and they're like just headed at me and like i just this entire time like i just feel this like this like weird feeling in my chest where it's like the only word that i've ever been able to use to describe the feeling um that just hits accurately with me is demonic like i just feel this like demonic feeling and yeah and they're getting close to me and i just eventually like get back in the other lane and like go around them and like so you like so you went into the opposite lane to like the lane they were supposed to be we traded lanes and went around traded lanes and i went around them that way and then like my mind is racing at this point. I'm like, are they asleep? Like, like, what is their deal? But like, yeah. Um, so I, I shift over and like pass them and I try to get a look at them, but I can't see them. And then, yeah, as soon as I pass them, as soon as I pass them, like I get back into my lane and they flip their yeah. headlights back on and get back over on their side of the road. Like, like, I feel like, I I don't know if it was like, like, honestly, I I don't know if this was like them being suicidal or like what it was, but like, it's freaky. And the the thing that makes this scary, this story scariest is that this is not the only time that it's happened to me. It's the first. So the same thing has happened to you? This was the first time. But that exact same thing has happened to me two more times since then. The same exact thing. It's it, it's been in different places, but it's the same mm-hmm. exact thing. I don't thing. like that. I don't Someone like that. Someone flipping off their like headlights, that. getting into my lane, and then mm. and then th- the same exact thing. And um, my roommate Mark was with me one of the times that it happened. Like we were out late heading to Walmart or something, yeah. but like the same thing happened. And he remembered me telling him that story, like, before it happened. Like, I told him about the other yeah. time it happened. And it's just like, it, it's freaky, dude. <laughs> like. I don't like that. I don't like that. Like, it's. Yeah. It's so I don't weird. Like that at all. And, like, the first time it happened, obviously, was in Indiana. And, like, the time it happened with Mark was in Tennessee. And then the other yeah. time it happened was also in Tennessee. But, like, it was just me. But, like it's weird like that's i feel like that this keeps happening that's such an abnormal experience like i've never heard anybody else talk about something like that and no, it has happened no, no, no. it is abnormal it's happened to me personally three times yeah i don't i'm not a big fan of that that's that's creepy no i i'm um, not a fan of that either like it freaks me out <clears throat> But yeah, I've never told uh, I've never told uh, my parents that story, and I feel like they'll probably watch this podcast. So sorry, mother, if I just horrified you. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that's uh, that's a lot to take in right there. Uh, I'm trying to think if I, you know, 
along that same vein, um, not not driving stories, but like switching gears, just spooky stories, you know, scary stories. Um, I'm trying to think. I remember, um, which you know about Hell's Gate. You know yeah, about yeah, what yeah. Hell's Gate is, right? Okay. Well, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna tell the story of my experience. Okay. Okay. So, I remember freshman year of college. Uh, someone mentioned to me they knew about this haunted bridge, like this haunted overpass in a place called Brazil, Indiana. And I was like, okay, what is it? So the story is, legend goes, there is a tunnel under a hill, like a tunnel through a hill, where there are no, like a train used to drive over the tracks there, basically. Yeah. And they demolished, they tore up all the train tracks, like there no trains go over there. But if you honk your horns three times, like if you honk your horn approaching the tunnel three times, you pull in and you turn off your headlights and wait, trains will go over. And I was like, no way, no way. There's no way that that happens. Yeah. So my friends and I, we all pile into a van. Like we all pile into my friend's van and we make a road trip. It's like three, it's like a three hour trip there. So we make a road trip and we go there late at night and we like finally, we find this place and it's eerie. It's really, really eerie. Yeah, well, like we uh, that, that area is like, isn't there like cult activity in that area? I think there, like that's that's part of the, like, I don't know if that's part of the legend. I don't know if that's the truth. It's it's all just disseminated information to me. You know okay. what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I just believe what I hear when it comes to that sort of thing. But they talk about like uh, a lot of people out there, uh, like organized murder, basically that sort of thing. But I digress. So we pull up. And there's this long gravel road, and then at the, it's all winding. And I'll tell you, I've never heard, like, eight people be more quiet. You know, eight people are piled into this van. And we've been joking the whole way there. We're like, ah, like, this, like, this is so stupid. I don't even know why we're doing this. And we get here, and everybody shuts up. Because suddenly it becomes real. And yeah. we're like, okay, we're, we're about to do this. Yeah, pulling so up on it is three freaky. Yeah, so we honk three times. And we pull through, we pull around, we stop at this, like, little... Uh, this just triples the scariness. We stop at this abandoned church that's just dilapidated and falling apart. And, like, you see all this, like, religious imagery that's, like, like decayed and decrepit. And you're like, ooh, that gives me the heebie-jeebies. Yeah. And then you pull back down, you pull in, and we stop. And it's silent. And we don't hear anything. And we sit there for five minutes. Nobody said a word. We're all just getting tense. In the distance, we hear what sounds like screaming. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I about... I about shit my pants, dude. I really did. I really did. So you, I was like, so you legitimately I like, just, heard this? Yes, I heard something in the distance that sounded like screaming. Oh my goodness. And my friend, my friend in the front, he goes, let's bolt. Like the guy who's driving. Yeah. And I, I swear, right as he says this, what do we hear? A train horn. We hear a train horn in the distance. We all just... <gasps> uh -huh. We stop. And we think... Like, all of us are thinking the same thing. Nobody says anything. We're like, this is... Like, this is what they said would happen. Yeah. So we're all just sitting there frozen in fear. And suddenly, we hear it again. But this time, it's closer. And then we hear the, the trademark... The mm -hmm. You know, the train's coming close. And suddenly, this train starts barreling over us. We hear, like, it's so loud. Have you ever, like, we're under a train. Yeah, yeah, Like, yeah. a ghost train, man. There, There's supposedly no tracks up there. And we see the lights, like, we see the lights, like, passenger lights all over the place. And we hear this sound. So my friend is utterly horrified, and he puts the car in drive, and he takes off. And I swear to God, all of us look back as we're leaving. We look out the back glass, and there's nothing. I don't see anything on top of this hill. I, it could have passed. It could have been a real train. I. It's to this day I cannot explain it. Yeah, yeah. That is like it, that is, that is the truth. That uh, the um. You know, that's what I. That's what we saw there. Yeah. No, that's that's your experience. Like the um, the screaming is what freaks me out, because oh, like. Oh yeah, I didn't like it. I didn't like I've, it. I didn't like I've it. been there um a couple times. And um, yeah. I went with Nathan Dots once. Um, yeah. And Nathan and I, like, we wanted to go up, like, and see if there were tracks up there. Um, okay. And we did. And we did. Like, 
we climbed the hill, which was so difficult. Like, it was, like, overgrown, and, like, it was just not not yeah. a fun climb. Yeah. And we get up there, and yeah. there are tracks up there. So, like... Oh, there are? Yeah. Not to, like... Aww. Not to, like, put a damper on your story or anything. No, that's so... But, sad. Um, no, no, it's... Now, now I just feel stupid. No, 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 no. <laughs> we just sat on we just sat under a bridge while the train went over. No, I was horrified. No, no, like no. <laughs> I, I, I'll I'll get I'll get around to it. But like, a we waited up there for a train to come, and like one eventually did. And not only did a train come, but like it for some reason had to stop. Like it never stopped, but it had to slow down. So like the train is yeah. not going very fast. And Nathan and I like took turns like jumping on this train, and like. <laughs> like riding it for a ways and then jumping off of it and it's like one of my favorite memories of uh like nathan is just like doing that with him but like that being said like even though there are train tracks up there like that area is freaky like there's something yeah. off about it like like yeah, i no. i will concede like i know that like like i know that there are tracks up there but even still like i don't like being there like there, no, there's something no, there's some, there's something really wrong about that place yeah i don't like it i you know i feel i feel really dumb now I, we we thought there was a ghost train we were all like we were a bunch of like we were adults at the time you know we were all 18 <laughs> and we drove out there we were horrified man we were so no, terrified see, i was like <laughs> my first experience was similar you know? like my first experience was similar and like um i've been there a couple of times and like as i learned like yeah there are tracks and like yes this yes that but like even still, like, there are, every time that I've gone, yeah. there has been some yeah. experience there that I can't explain. Like, the fear was, the fear was real. Like, because even if the train is real, what about the screen? Yeah, the screen you is know? still what something, it's unexplained. Like, you can't explain it. Yeah. And like, the first time I, I was there. I don't know where there, that came from. The first time I was there, there were things that happened that just, like, it, it's weird. Like, it, I can't, I can't put, like, a finger on it. Um, we yeah. left the first time I went there because nothing was happening. Mm -hmm. And like, yeah. And like we, uh, I went with a bunch of, uh, like fellow Christians, which we might have, uh, done ourselves in by uh, praying before we went. But, um, <laughs> but like we, we left, we left, Why would, yeah, we left like, like, like we prayed before we got there. Like, please do not welcome, like, like. Um, any like unclean ah, dude, that's, spirits that's and the... stuff like, which is against the entire. Well, of course, point. they didn't come. Then but, you've got God on your side. But like, <laughs> but like, as we left, I swear this happened. I swear this happened. Like, as soon as we were leaving, we were talking about it, and we were like, like, I think that's where we went wrong. And like, without even thinking about it, like, I was uh like, I was getting. This is a weird like sidebar, but like, I like. It, it does not take a lot for me to like sweat like like i just yeah. like it, it's just how i am so like i was like i like took off my jacket You're a real moist boy <laughs> it's true but like i took off my jacket and i'm like i'm still feeling it and like sometimes oddly enough like jewelry will like get me to sweat so like if i'm wearing a bracelet or something <laughs> like i don't know i don't know. just don't don't i put on earrings and my god <laughs> i'm, I'm it's pouring when i got earrings on but no um but yeah, so I reached like to take off my necklace that I was wearing, and it's a cross yeah. necklace. And I swear, the second, the second that I took it off, we hear like we hear a train, like the second, and like just the like whistled like the horn, whatever it's called, like like immediately afterwards. I don't like that. Yeah, yeah see, it is that's... that's freaky. And we went back. We we're like, we have to go back. We have to go back. And like this is before I knew like yeah. there were tracks. But like we went back yeah. and we like we got into the tunnel and there was there were three more within the next like hour. And it's like I get that there are tracks up there. But like aren't there laws about like trains have to be like a certain distance away from each other? Like I don't think trains I, you can, know that's I don't think trains can be that close to each other I, I don't think they can come that often and like like another three hours on the same like three an hour on the same train yeah I don't know I don't know that, like, I, I'm not a conductor I don't know the yeah, I don't know laws, the rule but... I don't know the laws like whatever but like and then another time that we went there like like 
we've heard just like loud like bangs and stuff like and like things like hitting the car and it's like like from outside i don't mm, and it's like yeah it, it's it's freaky like it is a freaky place i, I don't want to go back not, yeah, i don't want to go back. train or not like it is a weird place like there's something yeah. off about about that place for sure um, Yeah, I didn't. Let's not. Let's not. Let's not talk about scary stories. Yeah, let's scary. let's make it a little happier. I, like I didn't mean to deflate your story, yeah. but I feel like I still gave it credibility. <laughs> like, because I mean, you gave it you gave it credibility. I just feel feel a little silly because we were we were terrified. I thought there was a ghost train. Okay, I believed <laughs> in that. I'm gonna need to do some soul searching after this podcast is over. Maybe go crawl in a hole and die. I don't know. Oh my goodness. <laughs> um, you you talked about um, Pizza Hut. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it made me think of the very first job I ever had uh, at McDonald's. Um, <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I think I'm. I think I might have, you know, talking about scary things. You know, my one of my managers at McDonald's. Um, I, I think I've told you the story. I don't but you think, know what I'm going to. I don't think again. this counts as a scary story. I just think it's hilarious. No, it's not, no, it's, it's not a scary story. <laughs> but one of my managers played God. I've never seen anything <laughs> like this. Uh, and I promise. I will qualify this by saying it's a very clean establishment. I worked there for a year, and I know for a fact that it's very well maintained. Yeah. However, one day my boss, uh, he takes me to the back, and he he says to me, he's got on plastic gloves, and I don't know why, and he says, hey, you want to know a secret? I said, no. (laughs) And he said, he said, come on. And I said, okay, sure, I'll bite what? And he said, did you know that flies that have fallen in water are not dead. And I said, what, what do you mean? Of course they are. Look at that. And I point to one in like the mop bucket that's like been sitting in bleach. Like there's a dead fly in there. And he goes, now watch this. So he reaches his like plastic glove hands in there and he brings this to like the very, very back and he sits it on a counter in the corner and he sits this little dead fly on there that's just been waterlogged. And he takes two little McDonald's salt packets and he shakes him onto it. <laughs> and he says, now just you wait. And I was like, do you literally want me to wait? And he says, yeah, just take a seat. Just wait. I said, oh, slow okay. day at McDonald's. So I, yeah, slow day at McDonald's. <laughs> so I sit in the back. I'm literally, I'm staring at this pile of salt, wondering why I'm being paid for this. You know, I'm wondering <laughs> why I'm on the clock for this. And then about 20 minutes pass, and I am so done with this. I'm like, this is so stupid. Why am I sitting here? And about this time, what happens? A wing shoots through the salt. And I'm, I like, <laughs> jerk back. I'm horrified. And suddenly, in betwixt the salt crystals, life occurs. I see this fly drag its carcass from the salt like a zombie. Like it crawls out and it like clambers its way back to life. And my manager comes sprinting to the back. Like he knows. Like he's got this weird like connection with insects. He understands that it's come back to life. And he comes back there and he looks at me. And then he looks at the fly and then he looks at me and then he looks at the fly. And he looks back at me and he says, you want to know how that happened? Because they're like 90% air. That's all that's in their body. You fill them with salt. They come back to life. It sucks out all the water. I said, oh, wow, that's... So that's really incredible that you just did that. And he goes, yeah. And then without hesitation, he takes his bare hand. He smashes the fly dead on the table. And he says, now get back to work. (laughs) That is hilarious. (laughs) Never have I said... He resurrected... This creature, only to just extinguish its life just as quickly. I've never seen anything like it. <laughs> okay, like you t- you saying that like um, reminded me of something <laughs> reminded me of something fascinating that I just learned, like about animals. Um, What's like, that? Something very specific. But um, but okay, so um, I was having a conversation with some people, like, and we realized that we didn't know the difference between leopards and jaguars like we okay. could we couldn't figure like we couldn't remember we're like are yeah do leopards live in asia or do the or africa or do they live in Asia? like we couldn't remember like yeah. the distinction of the two and yeah we started talking about it's like aren't um 
eventually we were like, um, jaguars are black, aren't they? And then someone was like, um, someone made the argument. It's like, no, the black cats are panthers, like black panthers. Yeah. So, uh, like, just <laughs> this is a really weird like shift in conversation. I understand, but like, it's fascinating. <laughs> so we we eventually like did a little research. And we found out that, and you're free to fact check me, but like this is legit. Like, black panthers are not a species of animal. Like, black panthers do not exist. And what do I what I mean by that is, black panther is a classification of big cats. So any big cat that is black is technically a black panther. So, okay, uh, yeah, no, I'm lost right now. No, so, so, so like, any... So, a black panther, like, think if you're thinking of a panther right now, like... Well, a pa- okay, like, aren't, aren't panthers and cougars and mountain lions all the same thing? Um, right? What do you mean isn't by, that, what do you mean by panther- the same thing? Okay, isn't, aren't all of those words a classification for the same animal? Isn't cougar, mountain lion, puma, panther, aren't those all... Like a classification for like the like brown, uh, you know, like the you know what a mountain lion is. Yeah, you know what that looks like, right? Yeah, isn't aren't all of those words a classification for mountain lion? I'm not sure, but Puma, like cougar, mountain lion, panther. I thought they were all the same thing. I'm not sure, but um, I just like I just googled it because I was curious. But it says here like a black panther is a color variant of any big cat species, and black color panthers variant. in Asia and Africa are leopards. And those in the Americas are black jaguars. So black a black jaguars. a black panther is not an animal. Like it is not its own species. Like it is not a okay. it is not a different big cat. I did not know like, that. Isn't, That's crazy. Isn't that fascinating? Because yeah. like yeah. out of nowhere, like like just through the through like the course of a conversation, it was just like yeah. revealed to me that like an animal that I thought I don't was real was like not real. Um, <laughs> like, I, not, not to toot my own horn. I just looked it up. Mountain lion, puma, cougar. Mountain lion, puma, cougar, and panther are all the same. Thing. Okay, they're all mountain lion. That's what I thought. See, like, that's, I hear those. That's another thing. Around. Like, did you I, know that? I didn't. Yeah. I didn't know that. Like those all refer to the same animal: mountain lion, puma cougar and panther it's all it's the same thing like doesn't that that sounds like four different types of things yeah for sure and then like beyond that um like well going off of that like panther and black panther are two different things like a black panther is just a classification for any big cat that is black yeah and like yeah that is so weird (laughs) you know what's you know what's insane to me um I, I I spent a lot of time thinking about this. I heard, I overheard um, some of these things. And I watched a lot of Planet Earth recently. I've been watching a lot of Planet yeah. Earth and just thinking about different species on the planet, I suppose. Dude, planet Earth's and cool. Isn't it crazy? It is. It's really cool. If, if you've never watched uh, BBC's uh, Planet Earth, so amazing. It's on Netflix, it's probably isn't it? one of Yes, it is. It's one of the most fascinating things I think humanity has ever documented it honestly it's like done over the course of years and years and they just so eloquently and cinematically capture uh videos of all these exotic animals that yeah. you'd never see anywhere else it's very it's cool. beautiful um but no one of the things that it really just enlightened me to is think about how different animals perceive like how <clears throat> the way we see planet earth like our planet earth is so different, so radically different from how everything else sees it. Like, this reality is just what we've bought into. Like, uh, for example, uh, like, bees, they can sense uh, electromagnetic, electromagnetic radiation. Bees see patterns on flowers. Like, they sense patterns on flowers, and they can tell what flowers have not... I'm basically stealing this straight from a Joe Rogan podcast that I heard, uh-huh. so I didn't... I'm not the one who came up with this. Well, obviously, but, you didn't discover this, but... <laughs> no, I didn't discover this. But just th- that, for example, like how they how they perceive uh, that differently, I suppose. Like they can see 
things that we can't. Like some animals are, uh, have you ever heard of a mantis shrimp? It is a, it is a like, no, I don't know what don't level so. of water it is. It's an ocean creature and it's capable of seeing, like they can tell by studying its eyes from like dead specimens, that it's capable of seeing like so many additional colors. Yeah, yeah, Like yeah. its eyes have additional, like it can perceive things that we can't. Yeah, aren't there certain, you know what I aren't mean? there certain insects as well that can see additional colors? Yes. Yeah. I believe so. Uh, I, be- I believe, you know what, you can fact check me on this. I believe butterflies. I don't know. I, don't, I have no idea. Um, but yeah, that, but that is fascinating. It's just, Cause it, that completely how, uh, changes like the way the world looks. Reality. Like, <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean that, and then, um, like, like a lot of animals, you don't even, you don't even think about this, but like a lot of animals don't rely on eyesight. Yeah. You know, eyesight is the main human, um, like that's the main human sense. Basically. Yeah. That's what we use to distinguish everything, you know, um, and something like, say, a bat. A bat uses echolocation. Yeah. You know, like, literally what they do is they, like, make these high-pitched screams, and they bounce off of things, and they come back to their giant ears. Like, yeah. that, like that concept sort of yeah, makes Yeah, their main sense, sense is hearing, like, is sound, yeah. like, and not, and not like, sight, like, like ours is. Like, they can determine the spatial, like, insects. Like, they use it to eat insects. They can determine by screaming, basically. Like, imagine if you walked outside... And you screamed, and you're like, "All right, yep, school's that way." <laughs> and you started walking. Like, imagine how ridiculous that yeah. is. But that's what they do, you know. Um, and then snakes, snakes can taste, uh, like they they taste the air to uh, to smell, you know. Like they can they can sense animals. That are, like that's why they stick their tongues out. They, they, you know, they're tasting the air essentially. It's it's fascinating just how different the world is to other creatures, you know, like they don't see it the same. Yeah, for sure. You know, even dogs, but, um, dogs can't see color. Yeah. But, uh, well, I believe they can. They're, it's just like, can they, can they see partially color? I, I thought that's, I don't I think feel like I was talking. I don't think they're up. completely colorblind, but they are like, they, they don't see nearly like as much dulled. color as like we do. Okay. But, um, yeah. But then again, like, I don't really know what, I don't want to spread a bunch of misinformation yeah. in this podcast. I also just, don't really kind of know like, right the specifications of like colorblindness. Like I don't really know what that is because yeah. I'm not colorblind. Like I don't have an understanding of it. But um yeah. <laughs> but um yeah, like even beyond that, like a conversation you and I were having like mm-hmm. recently is like the fact that some animals like have advanced levels of like consciousness. And that, like, humans are not the only animal that have consciousness. Like, other animals are self-aware. Yeah, um, there was a, there's a species of bird. I cannot, I, I would, I wish I knew what it was. I wish I knew, is it, um, it might be a starling? It might be a starling? Yeah. You know, there's, you can keep talking and I'll give it a Google. Yeah, there's a species of bird that uh, is self-aware, like it sees itself in a mirror and it can recognize itself. It recognizes its, like they've studied its behavior and it doesn't think it's another bird, you know, because most of the time when animals see themselves in mirrors, they freak out, you know, like you've seen videos on the internet. European like mag cats or magpies European magpies okay, or whatever not a they're called. Not a, not a starling, not a starling. Yeah, yeah. Whoa, way off. Uh, yeah, you should fact check everything that we've said it, because we might just be full of crap. Hey, whatever. But, they're watching but, us because they like us, not because they want to become smarter. Because not because we're smart. <laughs> uh, um, but yeah, these these birds are self aware and like. Um, did you did you see anything about Coco the gorilla? Yeah, I know a little language? bit, and I was just telling someone about yeah, it no, the other day. But they taught they taught the gorilla how to use sign language, yeah. and she learned. Uh, over the course of her entire life, over 1,100 signs for like different um, like different things. Uh, she became friends with uh, Robin Williams, you know, like the comedian. Oh, I didn't and know then, that. And uh, then I watched, yeah, I watched it. Like she, like there's some videos of him like playing with her. Basically, he like tickled her. She was apparently very ticklish, which is interesting. Uh-huh. Um, but they showed a video of like they told her that Robin Williams had died, like. Like they signed it to her, and then they told her in English, and she started signing, you know, the set like the the signs for like grief and sorrow and sadness, dang, and like how upset she was and like bad, 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 like all of these things, and it's just the empathetic capacity of animals is lost on us, you know. I think we really want to believe we're the only thing on Earth that has feelings, and that's not true. Yeah, it is not true. 
you know, it, it's impossible to argue that animals don't have feelings. You know, they all kinds of animals feel fear. Yeah, for you know, sure. They're terrified. Like you see that in dogs and cats. You know, like have you ever seen a dog that's been abused before? Yeah. You know, like I, our neighbor had a, like they adopted a dog from the shelter that had been abused, and if you pointed your finger at it, it would like lose it. It would like go into a frenzy. It would be so terrified, and you just think like. Like most animals have the capacity for this sort of thing. Most uh, vertebrates, anyway. Yeah. Like most things with, I say that because you know most invertebrates, you know spineless animals, they're not as, they're not as smart. You know, I don't care about the snails. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's um, fascinating. It really is. Like it's it's very cool. I, I think it really I think it really puts puts into perspective. Um, well, not necessarily puts anything into perspective, but it makes you think about, say, the meat argument about like eating meat. Yeah. Um, you don't really, you don't really accept the gravity of everything. Like, think about everything that had to die for you to eat. You know, like you, because you don't have to really come face to face with that. Like, you can accept that. Like, I eat meat. I'm happy to eat yeah. meat. I think meat is delicious. But like, you don't really think. Like, when you go to McDonald's and you order a burger, like, you don't think about a cow. That was actually alive. Yeah, you know, you don't consider well, some like, somebody do. slaughtered that animal. <laughs> some people do. Yeah, some you know vegans and that sort of thing do. Um, I don't know. It's food for thought. You know, I'm probably saying some very obvious things like, oh yeah, obviously they killed a cow to make your burger. I get it. <laughs> but it's just something that you don't even you know you don't even weigh in on. I think. Uh, I mean, it's it's brutal. Like uh, actually. Like I, I, I've hunted before. Like I've killed, uh, I've killed squirrels. I've killed rabbits. I've never killed a deer, but I've seen plenty of deer gutted, and actually seeing something like that, like happen. Yeah. Like it's, I, you know, I don't want to sound like a softy, but it's intense. Like to really do that, like to do it yourself, you know, to like reach into an organism and pull its guts out, basically, and then cook it, like cook it and eat it. You know, I know it's a natural thing. It's been happening for millions of years. It's the way of life. It's the way that this is. Like if you've never experienced that, it's it's hardcore. Yeah, for sure. Like there is there is weight to that. Like you you took that creature's life, and, and now you're gutting it basically. Uh, anyways. Yeah, yeah, that's an interesting thought, <laughs> for sure. Yeah, I am. Um, this is a complete shift in topic, but yeah, no, that is. But okay. it was just something that uh, it was just something that came to my Those mind. Those are welcome. But, um, so, because I, I was talking about, like, frustrations earlier, like, not having a vehicle, but I was thinking yeah. about, like, something else that frustrated me, and, like, it's been in the back of my mind ever since I was talking about the frustrations, you know, just boiling, yeah. wanting, me wanting to get it out, but, um, yeah. so, lay it I, on the table, brother. I am subscribed to Movie Pass. um, okay, and, like, it is a very cool service. If you don't know what it is, like you pay ten dollars a month and you can see like pretty much you can see free movies like the whole month. You can see one a day, and uh, they've started to add yeah. different like restrictions to it and whatever. Like overall, it's a good service, mm-hmm. but it's a good service but. if nothing goes wrong. And what I mean by that is they have the worst, and I mean the worst. Um, I don't know what it would be called, like customer service, I guess. Customer like, service? Yeah. It is horrible because they don't have a phone number for you to contact them. And their email is mostly automated. So if you have an issue, it is so difficult to get a hold of somebody that works for the company to get it sorted out. Like, it is so yeah. difficult. And I am just in such a frustrating season right now with it because since the app updated and I read about it online, like this is a glitch that is happening since the app updated for some people, if you updated the app too quickly after the last update, then there's this glitch that won't let you log in to your movie pass. And so I've been, not good. I've been unable to log in for a week and I have been emailing them about this and I've gotten like, I've sent so many emails, like so many emails and I've gotten one response. And the one response that I got told me 
that the best way to talk to a representative is through the in-app chat feature. Well, I can't log into the app. So clearly, they didn't read my email. And I responded to them, and then I got an automated response that said, this conversation has been closed. Please start another one. So not only did they not read my email and not look into my issue at all, but the solution that they gave me is impossible because I can't log into the app. And I'm sorry, I'm getting really heated about this. But I'm paying $10 a month for a subscription that I can't use. And there's no way for me to cancel it because the only way to cancel it is in the app. And it is so infuriating. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. That was just a rant out of nowhere. But, like, I have to get it out because it is so irritating. Like... <laughs> I'm sorry. Like there's so no, many movies. That's, that's really. There's so many movies funny. that are coming out that like I want to see, but like you I'm not watch... gonna pay for them while I'm paying for this subscription that allows me to see movies. Like, oh my god! Don't watch Jurassic World two. <laughs> you're you're not missing out on anything. Don't watch that movie. Oh man. I would say you should give your little rant, but that would be You know, I don't I don't want I don't want to I don't want to fuel too much hate. Oh yeah, no, it would be spoiler filled. Uh to cut it to cut it short, uh I liked Jurassic World 1. Yeah. Don't waste your money on Jurassic World 2. <laughs> there are some redeeming factors, but the end of the movie is the straight up st <laughs> My blood's going to boil, dude. <laughs> We're both gonna just have passionate meltdowns midstream. Yeah. We're gonna. I'm gonna have. I'm gonna have an aneurysm over here <laughs> thinking about Chris Pratt from that movie. Why does every movie need Chris Pratt? Hey, I like I Chris, Chris Pratt. Pratt. He's a good guy. I love, I, yeah, that was that was un. It was unwarranted. What I just said. I'm sorry, Chris Pratt. If you're watching this podcast, no, you're just you know as you yeah as you as, as you, you do as you do as you do. Hopefully, uh, we don't lose Chris Pratt as a viewer. But, um, yeah, like we get like a long heartfelt message from him that's like, "I'll just go." <laughs> that's what. <laughs> no, but you're angry. Like you're 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 frustrated yeah, with the no, movie. Yeah, no, I, I, <laughs> yeah, and like it, whatever. Um, like I, during my little spiel, like I'm convinced, like all of the veins, like like on my upper body were just like <laughs> bursting, and like <laughs> like you could just see all of them on me. Like I was yeah. that angry, and like. You have a very similar feeling towards towards that movie, <laughs> which I haven't seen yet because my movie yeah. pass doesn't work. <laughs> Maybe I'm not missing out on anything. Maybe it's for the no, best. No, you're not. I assure you you're not. I assure you you're not. <laughs> um, oh, my goodness. What is, Blake, this is a hard question that I'm putting you on the spot for. But what do you, you know think? What? Go for it. Go for what it. do you think the worst movie you have ever seen is? The worst movie you have ever dirty, seen. Gr dirty Grandpa. Dirty Grandpa. Ooh. I haven't, dirty I haven't seen it. I haven't seen it, but... D don't. you, Dirty Grandpa with Zac Efron and Robert De Niro. Two actors that I like. I love Zac I Efron. I like Zac Efron. And I like Robert De Niro. And I, yeah, and I like Robert De Niro. It is the most vulgar, stupid baseless film i've ever seen and the worst part is it's pretty well produced yeah like there's good cinematography it looks like there was a pretty hefty budget for it you know like it looks not not like a blockbuster or anything like that but it looks like they they put some actual money into that movie and it is just so awful and have you ever seen um parks and recreation i haven't watched the whole show but i've seen it yeah no i believe i'm pretty sure you know what i'm gonna give this a google i don't want to i don't want to get this wrong i don't want to be wrong about this uh, I'm pretty sure it stars April. Uh, what what is her name? Aubrey Plaza. Aubrey Plaza. Yeah. Let's see. She she's in yeah, Dirty Aubrey. Grandpa, isn't she? That's what I'm confirming. Okay. Okay. Yes, she is. Okay. Her character. You know how she's like like she's like nice and like kind of cute in uh, Parks and Rec. You know, yeah. like she's like uh, like. Like the nice, like the opposite to Chris Pratt. You know what yeah. I mean? Like she's like, like innocent. Yeah, innocent basically. Uh, that is not the case in Dirty Grandpa. They make her to be. There is a there is a sex scene 
with Robert De Niro and her, and it is the most disgusting, vulgar pile of trash media you can ever consume. Oh my goodness. Like you watch that, and you just feel like, man, I've drifted so far from God. Like, I need to go to church <laughs> after watching this happen, because, like, it's... It's disgusting, yeah. man. I'm, man. I'm squinting right now, so, because I can't... I, I pictured it, and it needs to leave my mind right now. Yeah, so... This might Ugh. just be my opinions on the whole, like, porn kills love, like, thing, which I agree with. Like, I agree with wholeheartedly. But, like, I just yeah. don't think that there's a place for, like, sex in movies. Like, for the most part. Like, if yeah, you're, there, okay, if you're, like, there's one if it's, movie. like, a love story. And it's like, yeah. like well, that's how you're... Most of it's gratuitous. Most of it's gratuitous. Yeah, most so it, like... of it is just not necessary. And, like, I don't know. like I agree. I agree wholeheartedly. Like, it doesn't, like, Star Wars, for example, not a perfect movie, tr- movie like, universe by any means. But, like, and yeah. Marvel's the same way. Like, they have this whole cinematic universe, and, like, not one movie has a scene like that. And mm-hmm. they're fine. Like... <laughs> Like, yeah, like no, it's, it's not it's, needed. It's tacked on. It's tacked on. Is what like, it is. I get it's that irrelevant. that might draw people in. But, like... It doesn't. It's just... It makes it awkward, yeah. is what it does. Because, like, most of the time, if you're, like... If you're watching... Like, who... First of all... First of all... Who really goes to a movie to see something like that? You know yeah. what I mean? Like, there's a market for that sort of thing. And it's readily available online. Like, if you want to watch something like that, you don't go to the movies. Yeah. You know, like, so why even put it in there? There is, I will qualify that with, there is one movie I've seen in my life that merited a sex scene. And that is The Terminator. Have you ever seen The Terminator? Yeah. Uh, The whole plot revolves around that. Spoiler alert. If you've never seen The Terminator, uh, well, it's an old movie, so... Go ahead and watch it, but mute this out if you <laughs> want to watch it. In The Terminator, the whole movie's about uh, the Arnold Schwarzenegger, the Terminator, comes back in time to kill Sarah Connor because her unborn son, like she's not pregnant, she doesn't like intend to have a son, uh, John Connor is the leader of the resistance in the future. Well, there's a scene where uh, she has sex with uh, Kyle Reese. Uh, and like it's like it's a pretty graphic scene, but like it's necessary to the movie because it explains how John Connor is born because the man he sent back in time is his father and you like you find that out you're like in the movie you watch that and you're like oh I get it paradox like it makes sense it is a story purpose you know it's not just like oh hey they're banging to bang you know yeah I don't know no, I agree. I agree with you, wholeheartedly. Yeah. That, I mean, uh, some movies, for the most part, sex doesn't like, belong in movies. Yeah. For some movies, like if it's a love story, like whatever. But like, most of the time, like, and I don't know. Maybe even then, maybe Dirty even Grandpa then. is a love story. I don't Dirty know. Gr- I haven't seen the movie. But like, I, I don't know. It's just I'd, my opinion. It it could be wrong. Like I'd give that movie is. a negative. Number <laughs> if I could, it's just it's a stain to cinema, honestly. But yeah, the um, the worst movie I've ever seen, which I'm not even gonna go into because like I'll rant about it for an hour. But the worst movie that? that I have ever seen is by far The Last Airbender by M Night Shyamalan. I knew it. I knew that's what it was you gonna knew, be. I knew that's what it was gonna yeah, be. But because I knew it's it. yeah, Avatar: The Last Airbender is just such a huge part of who I am because like it is my favorite show of all time, and I love it. I've seen the entire thing ten times through. Like, the full series, I've watched ten times through. And, like, I've seen various That's episodes, true. you know, upwards of, like, 20, like, time. Like, I love the show. Yeah. And the movie just takes everything that I loved about the show. It just takes my whole childhood and just destroys it. Destroys it right in front of me. And you know what's weird? Like, <laughs> the dumbest thing. I saw that movie in theaters three times three times in theaters and this is why the first time i saw it i was in denial that it was so bad i was in denial that that movie was as bad as it was and (laughs) so i go see it again and i'm like no like it was that bad and then my cousins asked me if i wanted to go see it with them because they were so excited about it and like yeah like I just went again because, like, again, I was just like, 
maybe it's not as bad as I thought it was. I paid to see that movie three times. That is how much I love that TV show. And it broke my heart over and over again. (laughs) That's really funny. Man. Um... (laughs) It makes me so sad. <laughs> oh man. Um all right, we're uh we're currently at an hour and one minute, so do we wanna wrap it up? Yeah, I think this is a good wanna... place. I feel like we've talked okay, about a yeah, lot. Yeah, no, I think that's a good place to stop. Uh I think we, we got some movie rants out. Um <laughs> No, I agree with you. The last airbender sucked. Oh, that's you know? horrible. And I from everything that I heard about the behind the scenes of that, uh Shyamalan kinda got screwed. I'm pretty sure he got dropped like Nickelodeon dropped yeah they him, pulled I'm out of the sure. movie like it's not all on him like I think as a director no, it's like, not, like uh, I think he has the potential to be great like I love oh some I of love his some of his movies some uh, of them are just I mean did he <laughs> but, yeah yeah you know and it's know. that sucks that's because that's what you remember you remember how terrible the movie was you yeah. don't remember the directing or like anything that went into it you don't you don't think about the behind the scenes stuff it's just no. what the final product is and the sour taste that left in your mouth yeah you know I don't know. It's just, man. <laughs> oh well. I'm I'm heated. Right. You're heated. Let's yeah. let's land the well, plane. Well, yeah. <laughs> this is uh this is this has been quite a good episode. I think we've we've talked about a lot of cool stuff. Yeah, uh, for sure. Next week, if we can if we can figure it out, because like I said, like we said last week, the way that we're doing this is so unorthodox. We can't see each other. Yeah. We're doing this uh, over the phone, recording with external mics and to our laptop. So if we can figure out how, if we can figure out how. We would love to have a guest. Yeah, we're going to try week. as soon as Everything possible in our power. to have a guest on the show. It's, it's just, just we're trying to figure out how to do this. It's just it's figuring really it out. Yeah, because like it's so difficult for just us to be on the show. Because we're not and, together. Like If we were yeah. together, this would be easy, but we're far, far away. Yeah, so, so we're working on it. Difficult. Just bear with us. Like We're going to have guests as soon as mm-hmm. possible. And like I know a lot of you want to be on the show and like the we'd love to have you yeah for sure but we're we're figuring it out and like i'm Mm -hmm. sure like i'm sure you'll be patient with it because you're all awesome but um yeah i said it last time i believe i might not have but if you have any suggestions on like how to make the podcast better like we would Mm -hmm. we would love to hear it like we are completely open you'd love to make any change honestly like it's just anything you'd like to hear us talk about as well for sure yeah Uh, i'd love to do that um, yeah like any subjects topics that you'd like to uh like to talk about that sort of thing yeah that'd be great yeah for sure so um thank you so much for tuning in if you made it this far uh leave a comment on the video saying that you like cats more than dogs or if you don't like cats more than dogs uh give us a definitive reason why you like dogs more and we will judge you but we'll you you gotta argue for dogs because man man oh man do we love cats (laughs) <laughs> but uh well this has been destination unknown episode two and we will catch you guys later yep see, see you guys, guys.